Hello, I'm Gary Schaefer, General Manager and Vice President for Mind Lab Americas. No matter where you reside, it's human nature to be curious about where we have come from and to better understand what we can learn from our history. It's efforts like saving the Sarah Barn Project that helps families and communities come together to share the history, discover the unknown, and to learn more about our past to help prepare us for our future. I would like to personally thank the Artifact Detecting Team, Southampton Historical Museum, and the generous landowners who allow metal detecting enthusiasts the opportunity to preserve local history in the Southampton, New York area. This partnership truly is a unique idea and is the first of its kind in North America. As you watch this video, my hope is that you contact your local historical society, museums, your local metal detecting clubs, and the artifact detecting team so you can work together to discover the unknown and help preserve the history in your own community as well. Thank you and please enjoy the video. I started metal detecting uh, a couple of years ago when I had some time over the summer. I was looking for a healthy hobby and I started detecting the usual place on the beach. In the fall of 2009 I was introduced to some private properties out on eastern Long Island. These properties were settled in the mid 1600s and had remained undeveloped up to this time. Having spent a day out there and discovering a couple of items from the 1700s, I was really hooked. I was racking my brain trying to figure out how I could find more of these type properties to detect on out in uh, eastern Long Island. And um, one morning while reading a local newspaper, I saw an article that was written about a few barns on Long Island, historic barns, that were uh, in need of repair. One of the barns was the Sayre Barn that is owned by the Southampton Historical Museum and they needed a couple of hundred thousand dollars. It was like the light bulb went off in my head. The Southampton Historical Museum is an organization that's 113 years this year and it's a group of people who are interested in preserving and promoting Southampton's uh, past and cultures. Our financing is uh, pretty much hand-to-mouth. We fundraise, we ask for donations, we have membership, and unlike a lot of other organizations our age, we do not have an endowment. So we have to earn all of our income and all of our revenues. The 1739 Sayer Barn is in critical condition. The Sayer Barn played a crucial role during the American Revolution and because there's so few barns left, this is one of the last chances to save Long Island's history and its role during the American Revolution. And we are desperate for new ways of fundraising to help save the barn. I thought to myself, what a great idea. I would be willing to pay money directly to the museum if they would be able to provide access to farm properties out in eastern Long Island for me to pursue my hobby. And I knew that if I was willing to do this, I was sure that there were other people that love this hobby as much as I did that would be willing to pay money also directly to the museum for the right to have access to these properties. I was thrilled to death when he called and said, I've got a great idea. Tom's image of a typical metal detector enthusiast was a guy in Bermuda shorts walking on the beach, picking up dimes and quarters that people had dropped in the dry sand. When you pass the coil over the ground, something could be under that coil that has been laying there for, for 200 plus years. Just, you know, it got dropped and forgotten about and now it's just in the ground weathering away, waiting for somebody to come along and pick it up. 
it's just a great feeling to pull something out of the ground and, and, and that excitement gives you a little bit of a rush and your heart starts beating. That's, that's, that's what I look for. My passion is the uh, colonial period, you know, the Rev War era. It's exhilarating every time you find something that you're not expecting. A lot of times you go to an area and you'll be looking and say, okay, this is maybe 50, 60 year area, you know, and then suddenly something from 150 years pops out in your hand. And that little excitement is enough to make you, you know, put a little more pep in your step. The, the number one goal is to find something really old and interesting. That's the number one goal. <laughs> and uh, I found lots of old and interesting items. You know, from colonial shoe buckles to uh, 14 karat gold wedding bands. So talk me through what you have here. Wow. A very, very corroded large scent, which I can't read the date at the moment. <laughs> some, uh, some pottery. My actual goal for this year is to find a you know, colonial shoe buckle, which probably has no value at all to it. Probably just a junk target. Mm -hmm. but uh, just, just to dig something like that up intact, because you rarely ever find them intact, is phenomenal to me. Actually, no, it's a buckle. Old buckle. Whatever we find, we like to preserve and restore. We're not in it to profit and put yeah. things on okay. eBay. It, it's basically retrieving artifacts, time travelers, if, if you will, and restoring them and keeping them somewhere safe. In the ground, there are a lot of minerals that attack metals and things, and over time, decompose happens, and uh, basically, if it's left alone long enough, it just withers away. And we feel that it's something that should be appreciated. This is our heritage out there and, you know, should be taken better care of. As a detectorist, I know myself that the goal is to retrieve whatever target you are detecting and leave the ground as, well, as close to perfect as you can when you retrieve an art artifact out. It's the signature of who you are when you detect as, as how you leave the ground, especially if it's not your property. The area that I live in is generally hard to obtain permission from private landowners, and the ADT really opened up a lot of doors um, to give detectorists like myself the opportunity to get out there and swing the coil on, on private land. I just thought it was a brilliant idea that uh, metal detectors could work in conjunction with uh, the, uh, the academia of, of uh, historical museums from Southampton. Uh, I just thought it was a great idea and uh, I wanted to get on board immediately. To have the opportunity to hunt some of the oldest land on Long Island Southampton settled in 1640. It just was uh, an opportunity I couldn't pass up. So I immediately picked up the phone, got a hold of Barry, and uh, asked, how do I join? Farmers and landowners very much want to help the museum. And they can do that by lending us their pastures for a weekend. This land that we own has actually been occupied by a member of uh, my family since about 1640 when the town was, the village was formed. The land has been in the Fowler family since the 1600s, early 1600s. It's been farmed always. I just wanted to help out the, um, the historical museum. I, you know, I'm a member. Um, I, th I think it's a great place. They do a lot of good work. I've, I've been to the museum several times and, and um, I mean, it's a good project. I was fascinated by it. I'd never heard of something like that. And as Mr. Edmonds explained and later Mr. Beck explained to me, it's a very clever and creative collaboration, one of which, one of, uh, that I'd never heard of before. And thought, what a great way to team up two very good things. If it was for another cause, it was just somebody I didn't know and said, hey, I'd like to come on your property, I'll pay you. I, I don't think I'd even do it. It was, it was more to because uh, I trust the people there and I wanted, to, I wanted to help out the project. I totally understand the value of archaeology and, you know, our past. Right. I know what coins can tell people. 
monetarily for the museum. We raised over $14,000 for them. This has brought in new sources of income that were completely unexpected. It was a success in that um, the metal detecting hobbyists were able to make a tremendous number of very exciting period finds from the 17 and 1800s. 1877, seated, Liberty nice. Half Dollar. 1822. <laughs> wow. Pretty old. <laughs> and it was a success in that the landowners out in that area started to realize that having this type of promotion on their property was a great way for them to support their local historical museum without having to make a monetary investment. From what I've learned about this whole project, and from what I know about landowners in general, I can't imagine anybody having a problem allowing this to happen. It's nothing but good. We hope this will be a long-term relationship with the metal detecting community. This is a new source of funds for us and a new way to reach out to our community. Very pleased with what I saw. Very organized, very personable. Couldn't do enough for you. The landowners were great, you know, and uh, it just beautiful experience. What's incredibly unique about the ADT concept is that it's actually been able to bring together three separate groups that have previously been unable to come to terms with each other's needs and wants. Metal detecting enthusiasts, historical societies, and private landowners. Together, the ADT has bridged the gap between them all. It's truly a win-win-win situation.